Did you know Kenny Rogers, the man who spent 65 years establishing himself as America's number one country music icon, left this world in March 2020? Not only famous for his massive career, Kenny also impressed the audience with his admirable love history. Having been married five times, can Kenny be called a marriage master? Oh, don't think so simply. Although there were happy and romantic moments, Kenny experienced a lot of pain in his personal life, affecting his family and his marriage. Today, his fifth wife shed light on the entire truth in her husband's life. Don't hesitate. Be ready to listen to them. The friendship between Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton was a unique bond that transcended the glitz and glamour of the entertainment industry. Despite persistent rumors and suggestive comments, the two music icons always maintained that their connection was rooted in a deep and genuine friendship. According to the Washington Post, one of the pillars of their camaraderie was their shared religious beliefs and the resilience they developed through challenging childhoods. Kenny Rogers' upbringing in Houston's Fourth Ward painted a picture of adversity and constant tensions. The housing projects he grew up in, the San Felipe Courts, were originally constructed for white families, leading to the displacement of families of color. As the fourth of eight children, Rogers faced the hardships of a family struggling financially. His father, a carpenter and amateur musician, and his mother, an office cleaner and hospital worker, worked tirelessly to make ends meet. Despite the difficulties, Rogers' siblings spoke about the strength they found in their faith and the sense of community they shared with their neighbors. We were poor, there's no doubt about that, acknowledged Rogers' brother, Roy, in an interview with People. His sister, Sandy, added that although they faced financial struggles, there was always a belief that they would overcome them. The Rogers family's sense of community extended beyond their immediate kin, as Kenny Rogers in particular held on to the values of gratitude and generosity that he learned in his formative years. When Rogers achieved fame and success in the 1970s, he did not forget his roots. Instead of a one-way journey to stardom, he saw it as an opportunity to give back to the people who had supported him during his humble beginnings. The Houston Press reported that Rogers made it a point to repay the kindnesses he had received over the years. In a touching example of this commitment, he learned that a former neighbor was facing financial difficulties and needed $600 to repair her car. Without hesitation, Rogers sent her $20,000 along with instructions to purchase a new vehicle. The accompanying note captured the essence of his gratitude. Thank you for helping me pay my rent years ago. Kenny Rogers, in his 2012 memoir, Luck or Something Like It, opened up about the deeply personal aspects of his life, revealing not only the triumphs but also the challenges that shaped him into the person he became. One of the poignant topics he discussed was his father's battle with alcoholism, a struggle that left a lasting impact on Rogers and influenced critical decisions in his own life. In an interview with Reuters, Rogers shared the painful realization that witnessing his father's struggles with alcohol and the resulting consequences served as a catalyst for his commitment to sobriety. His father's drinking habits and the hardships that accompanied them prompted Rogers to make a conscious choice to abstain from alcohol throughout his entire life. This decision was fueled not only by a desire to break the cycle of addiction, but also by a genuine concern about a potential genetic predisposition to alcoholism, fearing that he might follow in his father's footsteps. However, this commitment to sobriety came with a heavy emotional burden for Rogers. The memoir exposed a profound regret, the lament that he never truly understood the underlying reasons behind his father's alcoholism. The post-World War II era, marked by economic challenges and widespread unemployment, provided a backdrop to his father's struggles. Reflecting on this, Rogers expressed heartbreak over not having the opportunity to comprehend the deeper motivations that led his father down a path of alcohol dependency. It was a poignant reminder of the complex interplay between personal struggles and external circumstances. 
Despite these challenges, Kenny Rogers emerged as a resilient and optimistic individual, exemplifying a lemons-to-lemonade philosophy. The memoir revealed that Rogers, drawing from his own experiences with alcohol and drugs, found solace and purpose in photography. As a means to fill the void between his musical endeavors, photography became not only a creative outlet but also a therapeutic pursuit. Moreover, Rogers used his platform to advocate for those grappling with addiction, drawing from his firsthand experiences. Kenny Rogers' journey to stardom was marked by a deep-seated connection to music from an early age. Growing up surrounded by a family where all of his siblings and most extended family members played instruments, music was an integral part of everyday life, as reported by the New York Times. Despite this immersive musical environment, Rogers faced significant challenges on his path to success, as revealed in his discussions with Rolling Stone in 2014. One pivotal moment in Rogers' career came when Steve Wynn, recognizing his potential for greater things, informed him that he was going to be fired. However, Rogers, honoring his commitment, fulfilled the remainder of his contract by playing in a Las Vegas lounge with a modest capacity of around 600 people. This period marked a challenging phase in his career, and as he embarked on the pursuit of a solo career and attempted to secure a record deal, he encountered a formidable roadblock. Rogers faced consistent rejection from record companies, with a recurring theme in the feedback. He was deemed too old for country music. At the time, Rogers was between the ages of 35 and 40, an age range that, according to industry perceptions, seemed incompatible with the youth-centric image associated with country music. Despite these setbacks, Rogers persevered, demonstrating resilience and determination in the face of adversity. The turning point in Rogers' career came with the intervention of Larry Butler, a pivotal producer who played a crucial role in reshaping the trajectory of Rogers' musical journey. It was through Butler's guidance and support that Rogers finally secured the breakthrough he had been tirelessly working towards. The recognition and success that followed were exemplified by Rogers winning a Grammy for his hit song Lucille, a milestone that marked a transformative moment in his career. In acknowledging the people instrumental to his success, Rogers expressed his gratitude to Larry Butler when he accepted the Grammy. This collaborative partnership not only catapulted Rogers into the spotlight, but also shattered age-related stereotypes that had initially hindered his entry into the competitive world of country music. Kenny Rogers and Dottie West shared not only a prolific musical partnership, but also a deep and enduring friendship that extended beyond the recording studio. Collaborating on several albums and producing a string of major hits such as Every Time Two Fools Collide and Anyone Who Isn't Me Tonight, their musical synergy was undeniable. According to Country Music Family, their connection was not confined to the professional realm. They were exceptionally close friends outside of the studio. Tragically, Kenny Rogers found himself in the heart-wrenching position of being one of the last individuals to see Dottie West before her untimely death. In the early 1990s, West faced personal challenges, including a divorce and bankruptcy, as reported by The Boot. Despite the hardships, Rogers stepped in to support her as she endeavored to rebuild her career and life. One poignant gesture was Rogers giving West a car, a symbol of both practical assistance and a testament to their deep friendship. On August 31, 1991, West, driving the car Rogers had given her, faced a critical moment on her way to the Grand Ole Opry. When her car malfunctioned, she called her neighbor for assistance. Unfortunately, in the rush to get West to the venue on time, a tragic accident occurred as the neighbor crashed into a freeway divider. West sustained severe internal injuries, leading to her passing a few days later despite multiple surgeries. Reflecting on their friendship and West's untimely demise, Kenny Rogers expressed a personal goal in a 2014 interview with Rolling Stone. 
he aspired to ensure that Dottie West received the recognition she rightfully deserved by being inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. This aspiration became a reality four years later, and Rogers took to his Facebook page to extend heartfelt congratulations to my friend, the late, very great Dottie West. In 2012, Kenny Rogers found himself in the midst of a legal battle that underscored a pervasive issue within the music industry, the fair compensation of artists for their digital sales. As reported by The Hollywood Reporter, Rogers filed a lawsuit against Capitol Records, contending that artists should be entitled to 50% of the revenue generated from online sales, particularly digital downloads. This legal action was not an isolated case. Other notable figures, including the Allman Brothers, Rob Zombie, and Sister Sledge, joined Rogers in similar class action lawsuits. The crux of the matter revealed a substantial problem affecting the music industry as a whole. Industry experts estimated that a staggering sum, approximately $2.15 billion, had not reached the deserving hands of artists across the board. This figure specifically pertained to revenue generated from online sales on platforms like iTunes. Kenny Rogers, in his lawsuit against Capitol Records, claimed that the record label had withheld around $400,000 in profits from the digital downloads of his music. The legal action shed light on a systemic issue where artists were not receiving their fair share of earnings from the digital marketplace. Despite attempts to resolve the matter directly with the record company, the dispute escalated to a legal battle. The significance of this lawsuit extended beyond the individual case of Kenny Rogers. It highlighted the broader challenges faced by artists in the digital age, where traditional models of compensation were struggling to keep pace with the rapidly evolving landscape of online music consumption. The outcome of these legal battles had far-reaching implications for artists across genres, emphasizing the need for industry-wide changes to ensure fair remuneration for their creative contributions. The issue persisted, and by 2020, the landscape had shifted to streaming services. Haley Bosher, a senior lecturer in intellectual property law from Brunel University, London, highlighted the ongoing disparities in compensation. Despite streaming music generating profits exceeding $1 billion, approximately $1.3 billion USD in the past year in the UK alone, Bosher noted that the annual payout for 8 out of 10 artists was shockingly below $200, or around $250 USD. This disparate emphasis the uh, continuing struggle for artists to receive equitably compensation in the digital leg, underscoring the need for systemic changes to ensure a fair and sustainable and massive industry for all stakeholders. Kenny Rogers, in his 2012 autobiography, Luck or Something Like It, offered an intimate exploration of his personal life, delving into the complexities of his five marriages. At the time of the book's release, he had been married to his fifth wife, Wanda, for 15 years, and he candidly shared the lessons he had learned from his previous marital experiences. Rogers, known for his honesty, took responsibility for the failures of his marriages, attributing their demise to his own driven and selfish nature. In an interview with Reuters, Rogers reflected on his relationships, expressing genuine remorse for the impact his choices had on the women he had married. He admitted that as he became more consumed by his career and personal ambitions, he lost sight of the relationships that were important to him. Despite the challenges, he emphasized that he had genuinely loved each of his wives at the time of their marriages, placing the blame squarely on himself and the demanding nature of his chosen field of music. Kenny Rogers embarked on his journey of matrimony at the age of 19 when he married his then-girlfriend, Janice Gordon, who was pregnant at the time. However, this union was short-lived, and shortly after his divorce from Janice, he entered into a three-year marriage with Gene Rogers. Subsequent marriages followed, with Margot Anderson, 1964-1976, Marianne Gordon, 1977-1993, and finally, Wanda Miller in 1997. Each marriage carried its own set of challenges, and Marianne Gordon, 
In an interview with Closer Weekly, shed light on the complexities of her relationship with Rogers. Despite his total focus on her during their marriage, Gordon revealed that Rogers grappled with a sense of longing and a midlife crisis, driven by concerns about the perceived decline of his career. The end of the marriage with Marianne Gordon resulted in a divorce settlement, as reported by the Irish Independent, amounting to around $60 million. This financial resolution marked a significant chapter in the aftermath of their marriage and highlighted the complexities that arise when a high-profile individual's personal life intersects with the demands of fame and success. Kenny Rogers' final marriage stirred public interest and raised eyebrows due to the significant age difference between him and his wife, Wanda Miller. As he shared with Fox News, Miller was 28 years younger than Rogers, a fact that didn't go unnoticed, particularly by her parents, who were two years younger than the legendary singer. Despite initial disapproval, the couple's enduring love and compatibility silenced skeptics over time. Their initial meeting was not scripted, a chance encounter that seemed almost faded. The chemistry between Kenny and Wanda was palpable, and the sparks of their connection ignited instantly. As their relationship blossomed, it became clear that fate had orchestrated their meeting in a way that only seemed fitting for two souls destined to intertwine. Kenny Rogers' journey through the intricate landscape of five marriages stands as a testament to the multifaceted nature of love, fame, and personal growth. The final chapter of his romantic saga unfolded with the serendipitous meeting of Wanda Miller at a quaint restaurant called Prika in Atlanta, Georgia. Little did they know that this chance encounter would weave a narrative that transcended the complexities of their pasts. Their initial connection was orchestrated by fate on the canvas of a blind date. Wanda Miller, a 26-year-old hostess at Pricka, found herself at the epicenter of a destiny yet to unfold. Coincidentally, on the very day when her path was destined to cross with Kenny Rogers, she had been sharing her aspirations of finding her special someone with a co-worker. Little did she know that the universe had already set its plans in motion. Kenny Rogers, a legendary figure in the world of music, walked into Pricka that day, unaware that his life was about to take an unexpected turn. As he enjoyed his meal, his eyes were drawn to Miller, and an instant captivation took hold. Determined to unravel the mystery of this enchanting hostess, Rogers took the bold step of inquiring about her after finishing his meal. Leaving his number, he set in motion a sequence of events that would alter the course of both their lives. When Wanda Miller returned to work the following day, she was met with the astonishing revelation of a call from Kenny Rogers. Initially dismissing it as a prank orchestrated by her co-workers, she hesitated before realizing the authenticity of the situation. Gathering her courage, Miller took the leap and called Rogers back, unknowingly stepping into the next chapter of her life. Their initial connection, born out of a chance encounter and a bold pursuit, defied expectations. Wanda Miller in those early moments could hardly have fathomed that a seemingly ordinary day at work would mark the beginning of a romantic journey with a country music legend. Learning about their daughter's budding relationship, Miller's parents took the proactive step of calling Rogers to convey their disapproval. In response to their reservations, Kenny Rogers, showing both understanding and sincerity, assured Miller's parents that he would always be honest with both them and Miller herself. Over time, a remarkable transformation unfolded as Rogers and Miller's parents forged an unexpected and profound connection, evolving into what Miller fondly referred to as a trio of best friends. This heartwarming bond, born out of shared love and respect for Wanda Miller, became a testament to the power of understanding and genuine connection in overcoming societal expectations and age-related stereotypes. After five years of navigating the complexities of their relationship, Kenny Rogers and Wanda Miller took a significant step forward, exchanging vows in 1997. Their marriage, against all odds, became a symbol of enduring love and unwavering commitment. Miller, throughout their journey together, 
stood by Roger's side, offering support in both his personal and professional endeavors. Two decades into their relationship, Rogers continued to express the depth of their connection, emphasizing that Wanda was his soulmate. Their love story transcended societal expectations and judgments, proving that age was merely a number in matters of the heart. Additionally, Wanda Miller became the mother of twin boys, adding a new chapter to Rogers' life as a father. When Kenny Rogers announced his retirement in 2015, he was a 77-year-old father to 11-year-old twin boys. The decision to retire was influenced by a combination of factors, including mobility issues and a desire to spend more time with his children. This marked a poignant moment in Rogers' life, where family and personal well-being took precedence over the demands of a long and illustrious career. In interviews with the Irish Independent, Rogers candidly addressed the unconventional aspects of his marriage. He acknowledged the initial agreement with Miller that they wouldn't have children as they discussed their long-term plans. However, circumstances changed when Miller expressed a desire for children at the age of 31. In a heartfelt gesture, Rogers agreed to expand their family, driven by the understanding that he didn't want Miller to regret not having children in their relationship. Despite his initial reservations about having children again, Rogers explained that he didn't want to miss the prime years of his children's lives. He expressed a deep sense of empathy, acknowledging the poignant moments in other parents' lives, such as sending their children to college. Rogers recognized the inevitability that he might not be present during certain milestones in his children's lives, yet he chose to embrace fatherhood once more. Driven by love and a desire to ensure that Wanda Miller had no regrets in their relationship, Kenny Rogers, renowned for his musical prowess, also faced the challenges of parenthood, acknowledging both the joys and the difficulties that came with raising children. In a 2006 interview with the Irish Independent, he candidly discussed the complexities of fatherhood, expressing that being a father to his twin boys was an area where he believed he excelled. However, he humbly admitted to making mistakes along the way, a testament to the universal challenges of parenting. Rogers' journey into fatherhood began with the birth of his daughter, Carol Lynn, in 1958. The circumstances led to Rogers marrying her mother, and despite subsequent divorce and attempts at reconciliation, they remained estranged. In a gesture of respect for his daughter's relationship with her stepfather, Rogers chose to step aside rather than disrupt their bond, as reported by Fox News. This decision, reflective of his commitment to family harmony, showcased the complexities of navigating personal relationships in the context of changing family dynamics. Estrangement was also a theme in Rogers' relationship with his son, Kenny Rogers Jr., born from his third marriage. Although initially distanced from each other, Outsider notes that, after divorcing Kenny Jr.'s mother, Rogers made a promise to always be his father. Despite the challenges and physical separation, Rogers remained committed to his role as a father, recognizing the enduring importance of that connection. In explaining his decision to retire, Rogers expressed regret over not having spent enough time with his older sons. He revealed to the Daily Mail that this remorse stemmed from the desire to be more present in his children's lives, particularly during their formative years. The opportunity to attend his younger son's football games and witness their excitement underscored the importance of being an active participant in their lives. Rogers, like many parents, recognized the value of shared experiences and lamented the moments missed with his older children. In 1991, Kenny Rogers ventured into the restaurant business with the establishment of Kenny Rogers Roasters, a chain intended to provide an alternative to the popular Kentucky Fried Chicken. The concept behind the restaurant was to offer fresh rotisserie chicken and corn muffins, deviating from the traditional fried chicken fare. Despite the initial promise and appeal of the concept, Kenny Rogers Roasters faced a tumultuous journey that ultimately led to its downfall.
While rotisserie chickens were gaining popularity around the time of the restaurant's launch and even received a mention on the popular television show Seinfeld, Kenny Rogers' roasters encountered significant challenges. The first blow came just a year after its opening, when the chain was hit with a $10 million lawsuit filed by a company alleging that Kenny Rogers' roasters had copied their concept. Eventually, Rogers' restaurant resolved the issue by buying out the smaller company. However, this legal battle was just the beginning of the chain's troubles. Despite overcoming the initial legal challenge, Kenny Rogers' roasters faced increasing competition that proved to be too formidable. The restaurant struggled to maintain its market presence and financial difficulties mounted. In 1998, the company faced the harsh reality of bankruptcy, prompting the sale of the business. In the wake of these challenges, Kenny Rogers chose to distance himself from the struggling restaurant chain, both personally and professionally. The separation from Kenny Rogers Roasters marked the end of the restaurant venture for the iconic country singer. The business once envisioned as a fresh and appealing alternative to traditional fast food ultimately succumbed to financial hardships and market competition. Despite the closure of the majority of Kenny Rogers Roasters outlets, a surprising legacy endured, particularly in Southeast Asia, where approximately 200 locations still bore the name and offered a glimpse into a bygone chapter of the country music legend's diverse career. Kenny Rogers announced his retirement in 2017 after an illustrious career that spanned an incredible 60 years. Unfortunately, his retirement was cut short as he passed away on March 20, 2020, leaving behind a legacy that transcended genres and touched the hearts of millions. Rolling Stone reported that he died peacefully at home from natural causes under hospice care and surrounded by his family. While no specific cause of death was disclosed, it was revealed that Rogers had been grappling with mobility issues in the years leading up to his passing. The news of Kenny Rogers' death prompted an outpouring of tributes from fans, fellow musicians, and friends. One particularly poignant tribute came from Dolly Parton, a longtime friend and collaborator. In a heartfelt video shared on Twitter, Parton expressed her deep sorrow, saying, I loved Kenny with all my heart, my heart's broken, and a big old chunk of it has gone with him today. Parton's emotional words resonated with fans and underscored the profound impact Rogers had on those who knew him personally and through his music. The timing of Rogers' death coincided with the global COVID-19 pandemic, leading to restrictions on public gatherings. As a result, his funeral was limited to a small and private service, adhering to safety guidelines. However, there were assurances of a future public celebration to honor the music icon when circumstances allowed for a larger gathering. The restricted funeral service highlighted the challenges and adjustments that people around the world faced during a period marked by unprecedented circumstances. Kenny Rogers expressed deep gratitude to his fans for their unwavering encouragement and support throughout his remarkable career. However, this celebratory moment was overshadowed by a legal dispute involving a former friend and employee, Kelly Junkerman, adding a layer of complexity to the farewell proceedings. According to TMZ, news of the lawsuit broke, shedding light on a contentious situation surrounding video footage captured during Kenny Rogers' farewell tour. Rogers had allegedly given Junkerman permission to film the tour, but with the explicit understanding that the footage would not be released. Contrary to this agreement, the lawsuit claimed that Junkerman proceeded to release the footage in the form of a DVD titled Kenny Rogers, The Gambler's Last Deal. The legal action initiated by Rogers sought to obtain a ruling preventing the unauthorized release of the footage and also included a claim for $290,000 in damages. Legal experts from O'Loughlin Law Firm, LLC, indicated that the urgency in blocking the DVD's release may be attributed to the estate's intention to release an official version. The desire to avoid confusion between the unauthorized release and an official representation of Rogers' farewell tour contributed to the swift legal action. Pre-sale links for the DVD reportedly circulated despite legal challenges, 
emphasizing the need to halt sales to protect the estate's interests and maintain control over the official representation of the farewell tour. The legal dispute added a bittersweet dimension to Kenny Rogger's retirement, highlighting the challenges that can erase Avon in the midst of bidding farewell to a storied career. While Rogers expressed an immense gratitude to his fans for their support, the legal proceedings underscored the complexities that can emerge as artists navigate the intersection of their personal and professional lives, especially during significant transitions like retirement. What do you think about Kenny Rogers' unfortunate life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.